Hey friends, I'm Otis Gibbs, and this is my buddy Kevin Gordon. He's going to tell you a story about driving through a deep freeze so he could open for Clarence Gatemouth Brown. Clarence Gatemouth Brown headlined two shows that I opened in Iowa on that particular weekend. Eastern Iowa, which is where we were going basically, was the coldest place in the, in the continental U.S., that week. It was a diesel engine, kids. Never forget <laughs> the hazards of driving a diesel vehicle in the winter. I thought I had it covered, but uh, we start getting, the further north we get, the colder it gets, of course. And at a certain point, you have to change over to winterized diesel. Otherwise, fuel will gel performance <laughs> will go down and uh, I had the ratio all wrong apparently because it got it got much colder way too fast so that we, as we got further north the more we slowed down by the time we got to the quad cities which was where the first gig was it was probably seven eight in the morning it took us that long we were driving on the shoulder of the road going 30 miles an hour and it's like 10 below zero. But we feel like we have to keep driving because that's how we keep the heat going, you know, and, and if we could just get to the hotel, everything would be all right. State trooper pulls us over. He was great. You know, he, he, he sort of escorted us, uh, to the nearest Chevy dealer and those guys let us uh, let the engine warm up, let the truck warm up inside one of the heated garages. Get to the hotel, all fine, go to the gig, play the gig, goes fine, good time, you know, woohoo, big crowd, go back to the hotel, uh, which is in downtown. Davenport. The engine had a block heater in it, but there was nowhere to plug it in. So I was like, what are we going to do? This thing's not going to start tomorrow. So I took the door key. This was pre key fob days. I took the door key with me, left the other keys in the ignition, left the thing running, right? In a parking garage. Figure it's too cold for crime, right? <laughs> well, little did I know that some uh, un uh, poor soul who, who was in desperate need of a warm ride home would discover our idling vehicle in this parking garage. While we are in the bar of the hotel with Gates Band drinking, I remember Gatemouth coming down to the bar in his pajamas to get a glass of milk. <laughs> Beautiful, you know. And then he goes back up. He's he's done. He's serious, you know, serious cat, man, you know. So we're, you know, we have a we cut up and have us a big time, go to bed, get up the next day. I remember the sun was shining bright, but it was just cold. It was just so cold. Walk out. Where are the trucks supposed to be? <laughs> I'm like, didn't I park it here? And, you know, classic scenario. You got all your stuff and your... And we were smart enough at the time. We left the gear at the venue, with the exception of guitars and, I think, Paul's snare. And, okay, it turns out the truck's been stolen. We go in the hotel, call the cops, tell the... Tell the hotel manager about it. So she lets us back in our rooms. Gatemouth hears about it. And I just remember him sitting in the lobby of the hotel, you know, and it was like a nice big grand armchair. You know. It was looking pretty, pretty royal, you know. And he, he offered us a ride on his bus. He said, we will, y'all just ride with me. And, uh, Behind him were a couple of his band members. 
And as he said this, I just remember them like doing this, like shaking their heads like this. Whatever you do, don't, don't take him up on this. Apparently the deal was they had an exhaust leak in, on the bus. So uh, there were people getting violently ill because of breathing the diesel fumes in a concealed, you know, closed environment. Uh, fortunately, uh, not long after this very generous offer from the gate, the uh, Rock Island police found the Suburban parked in the parking lot of some, it was like a business like it does like industrial pumping, like a, you know, pumping out flood water and stuff. I don't know what you call all that. There were these trucks and then there were these two guys inside that were just racist as hell, you know. They had their ideas about who, who committed this crime. The great thing was, yes, there was a window broken out, but Paul snare drum was still in the back. Nothing else was taken. <laughs> it needs to be a joke where they put a second snare drum with it. Also. <laughs> <laughs> so that was part of our wild weekend with Gatemouth Brown. Um, we we had cardboard for a window for for a day, but uh, had to get it fixed because it was so cold. I always remember Gate just being a real old school um, band leader sort of guy, just and and just the, the coolest guy walking. You know, I mean, it was like it was, it had to be like a similar feeling to like being in the presence of Lightning Hopkins. You know. It's like, no matter if he hadn't, you know, like in Lightning's case, if he hadn't slept in three days or whatever, if he just got off a couch, he's still the coolest looking guy in the world, you know? Um, same thing with Gatemouth, man. Even though, you know, I think he's pretty sober presence in some regards, with regards to alcohol, I guess. But, you know, the pipe was another, another thing entirely. He was just really kind in that old school way, you know, especially, I mean, he took pity on us because our truck had been stolen. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more like it, subscribe to my channel, click the like button, and tell me down below what your favorite Clarence Gatemouth Brown song is. And for bonus, tell me about the coldest night you remember. And I'll see you somewhere down the road. Much love to you.